Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. So today I'm talking about Notion, or at least I'm doing a quick introduction. I'm always looking for methods to stay organized in my head, unlike my desk, which is a perpetual mess. At least I try cleaning it and it just goes wrong over time. Now, I'm pretty picky when it comes to these types of tools. I've been using Todoist for over a decade now, and I have to thank Maurits for making the suggestion to me back in 2009. But when it comes to note-taking tools, I've tried them all. I've tried Evernote, Google Docs, the Google Keep, uh, Workflowy, which I really liked, except for the fact that I couldn't put any images into it. There's probably been a lot more uh, Dropbox paper at some point, which I still really like for its markdown input. But at some point, you know, I even tried <coughs> paper and it's hard to search. And they all require something from me, which I'm really, really bad in. And that's trying to keep my notes organized in the long run. I'm a bit chaotic and that just gets me at some point. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Notion and how it keeps me organized in the long run, even with my scattered brain. Let's jump into it. Now, if you haven't used Notion before, then the main question that you'll have is, what is it? And to me, it's something which combines note-taking, a wiki and a database approach, and then rolls it all up into one. Using this database setup, it means that I can make structures of data and that keeps me organized over time. And this is a very distinct difference between other note taking apps. So why do I like Notion? Well, when I got started with freelance work, I started hitting the limits of what a brain could do. So to solve that, I had to start organizing my life, at least my mental life. Unlike this drawer, this one, my shed, and let's not even talk about the attic. So I'm a chaotic person. I want structure, but in reality, I couldn't even put dominoes in a straight line. Luckily, Notion has a very good templating system. It means that I can think about how I'm going to solve a particular problem and then repeat that over and over again. Other quick tricks that I can use with this templating system is that I add mini task lists to the site, meaning that if I go into a meeting, I have like a small subset of things that I want to use it for. And these make sure that I always ask the questions that I need to ask without forgetting anything. They also mean that I never forget any of the steps that are there. And there are also some guidelines, something which takes some of the thinking away when I need to write things down or we need to figure something out. Now, what I dislike about it. One, it's super slow to start on Android or iPhone. Android tablet support is absolutely terrible on the moment. I work around that by opening Notion in a browser on my tablet Galaxy S6. The offline support is also very limited. It does seem to work, but I just can't build on it yet. Well, lucky for me is that all these things are actually on the top of their roadmap. If you look at their what their planning side, it shows these things top, front and center. So with a bit of luck in a year, I can do another video and I'll have to figure out some new gripes. Finally, I'm going to do a couple of examples. Let's start with my recipe book. So this is my Notion recipe book. I'm using a very default gallery view and the gallery view in Notion shows you the sub pages with images on it and it shows you the tags. I'm using the tags so that I know if something is a vegan, vegetarian, if it's for dinner, if it's a salad. And that way I can use it to filter once this list starts getting long. You can do like an add filter, say I would like to filter on tags and I would like to see all the vegetarian options. And then the end result is that these are all vegetarian. Now another way I use the recipes is that Notion has an extension which allows you to add a web page, which I do for the crockpot red lentil curry here. And this part is mine. But this is all from the website. Now, one of the reasons why I would keep these in Notion and not just bookmark the link to the website is that I can add information. So, for example, 
I put stuff in metric system here because in the Netherlands we use the metric system and I don't want to convert from American bold eagle to metric every time I go shopping. And I also pick the picture that I want to see when I'm looking at the overview by putting it on top. One thing that I personally like doing is I add a picture of all the ingredients once I've done my shopping and that allows me to look at this picture and then know what I'm looking for in the store when I'm trying to find some recipe or some ingredient that I don't usually shop for. It's a nice quick reminder. And that's my recipe book. If you want to see this in more detail and this is for all the examples that I'm giving, be sure to mention them in the comments below and I might do a dedicated video just on one view on how I build it, what faults go in and how I could improve or add to it or customize it for your personal liking. This is my wish list, things to do and watch list. It's the same thing as my recipe book. It has a gallery view, it shows images of everything. I just added a couple of fields. So we take for example this video game, it has a price to it and it has an ownership to it. So if I get this, if I play this, if I'm done with it, I just mark this and it gets filtered out because that's the filter that I use here. Do I own this? This is stuff that I do not own and then I sort it on price. Now partially that's because I want to go from stuff that I could get right now to stuff that I'm saving up for but also because I can use the share function to share this list with friends, family, other people that asked me like, you know, what can I get you for your birthday? And they really like to have this live view of gifts that they can give that I actually want. I also use the view function to make multiple galleries and they are nothing more than a preset filter. So this one filters to play and unowned, meaning that I still wanna play Mark of the Ninja. That's the wish list. Part, let's jump into my YouTube video process, which is a bit more complex. So next up is my YouTube video process. This one uses a board view and the board view is very useful if you have a process. So you can see that I have steps here like ideas, mind map, thumbnail, film cut, b-roll, edit, publish. It's something I talked about at length in the last video. And then using this, I can drag videos on until I'm all the way to the end. Finally, I use templates so that I can easily prep for a video. So YouTube video and you get like this nice overview where I can follow my lists and fill in the description. For a more detailed look at this, I refer to the last video I made where I talk about the whole process, but I wanted to show this one as a quick example on processes from left to right. Finally, I wanna show a shared page. This is with my girlfriend. We're planning a trip for Japan in 2021. And this one uses the embed function of Notion. So this is a Google Maps and it shows details like places that we wanna see or visit. I'm pretty sure we won't be able to make all of them, but it's nice to have an overview and to plan your trip around that. It also has sub pages on it, things like flight details, food that we really want to try, places we want to visit, also packing lists, anything that you really need for the trip. Embeds are a wonderful way of adding extra information to a page using external sources. The other usage that I have that I use a lot is Lucidchart because then I can insert drawings and flowcharts that give me some overview. Images of course are embedded but just uploading them. Sometimes I embed Google Drive documents, so I think presentations or documents that I don't have a notion and that I still want to be able to quickly scan over when I'm going through my notes. This video went a lot smoother than my last video. Now, if you're new here, be sure to like, subscribe to video so you can get notified as soon as the new videos hit. At least the next four or five videos will be about Notion, so definitely stick around for that. Now, remember, you guys are awesome. Keep it up.